I got a job. I was 14, and it was working at the library, making $1.25 an hour. And um, I was a page, which means I shelved books. And that's how I sort of discovered books mm -hmm. and the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> uh, and I used to hide in the dumb waiter because I was not very big. And um, I would sneak in there and sit in the stalls in the ladies' room and put my legs up so they would never know where I was. And I'd be in there reading. <laughs> and um, that's sort of how I fell in love with books, sort of. But um, I lived, we lived in a house that was in Michigan, right? Um, that was raggedy. And we didn't have, there was no such thing as air conditioning. And heat was also a problem. But my sister and I slept in the attic. And um, I'm the oldest of five. And I really, they got on my nerves. <laughs> and so I was upstairs in the attic, and I had the fan on. And we had like these wooden planks on the floor. And um, I don't know, I leaned on one and it popped up. And then I looked down inside for some reason and I saw these little gold pellets and I thought we had, I'd struck gold. <laughs> and so I told my mother, we're rich, we can get out of this dump, okay? And it turned out it was insulation. <laughs> so, um, but inside, and she told, I'd start digging it out and she said, put it back. And um, I ended up finding this little tiny book, and it was called Bartlett's um, Familiar Quotations. Mm -hmm. And I had never heard of it. And that's how I started realizing that people felt all kinds of things. I could just look up a word. Um, and I, I was really blown away that someone had documented how other people felt about everything from peace and joy and you name it. And it, I, I still have the book. And that was like 1960 something. Wow. But, um, and I bought other editions, but that one really changed me because I had never read anything like it. And I didn't know that people actually documented what they felt and thought. So it, liberated me. I, 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 I didn't feel as lonely as I was, apparently. You don't look at the big picture when you're writing. It's, it's what's on the page that's more important, um, not the results. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's, it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's like cheating. Um, and, you know, you don't have to write. And so if you're going to do it, you put your heart into it. And you take the people that are on that page very, very seriously. Even though in my work there's a lot of humor, but it's like, I call it tragic humor. But it's, 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 I'm, I want to be a different or better person ha after having gone through what I put these characters through so that I develop what I would like to think of as a, a, to be more empathetic. Mm -hmm. I want all of us to be happy, okay? And so I write about characters who are going through something and they're not happy. And so I write stories so that whatever it is that they have to go through, it, there's no panacea, it's not gonna be a fairy tale, but they're gonna be further along they're gonna discover something about themselves that will give them some strength. Mm -hmm. And instead of going from A to Z, they might get to D, but it's further than they were. And that to me is what life is about.